Tiger Nation, and welcome into the week three edition of Inside the Huddle. Alongside the head coach, Greg Ruffin, I'm Joshua Jackson. First two weeks, we took a look at quarterbacks and running backs. This week, Coach, I want to take you back to spring drills. We were talking to a particular position group that really didn't have all that great of a day. He said to them specifically, I will not get beat at that position. That was a wide receiver position. That's what was spotlight today. You really went out. You and your coaching staff did a great job of getting some guys that can not only take the top off of a lot of defenses, but guys that can win jump balls, beat the man in front of you, and show a lot of speed on the field. Uh, one of the things that we really wanted to concentrate on as we attacked the wide receiver area, as, as judged by the performance in the spring, we, we felt that we had to get tougher there. Uh, we felt we had to get longer in, uh, in some positions uh, on, the, on the outside. And, uh, and of course, you know, from a speed standpoint, we had to be able to get some kids that can run. Uh, I, I was very, 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 very uh, pleased with the way our guys went out and recruited. And, and, and what's, what's crazy is that even now, we're, we're having more and more guys to come to us, even though we're going to highlight about eight to nine guys today, there's still surely another five or six guys that are going to come into the fold that's going to be into that competition for that you know one of those receiving spots you got guys well above six six you got guys that are uh, right around that that six foot five eleven mark guys that can you can really get things done in space you got guys that can win jump balls this could very well be not only what the guys that you bring in of course the guys that are coming back mm -hmm. this has the potential of being not only one of the best groups in the division also in the conference but really could be one of the best receiver groups in the country we, we think that uh, that's what we were recruited to. Uh, once again, you know, they have to come in and be able to, to ascertain what it is that we want to do and what we not want to do in terms of scheme-wise, skill set, and be able to get guys fit in the right positions. But uh, then when you talk about it, uh, I'm, not, I'm not Abdul Lieber. Uh, here's a guy that's six foot 190, uh, ASA uh, Junior College down in Miami, which is the only junior college program in the state of Florida. And uh, the kids from on the you know, when his highlights are shown to me, does a great job of tracking the football. He's physical. You know, he plays the ball at his highest points, things of that nature. Uh, getting a Wesley Belford, you know, kid out of Baker County, who's a, a great football player, you know, in terms of being a, having played for a state championship, being a significant contributor on both sides of the ball as well as in the return game. We're really looking for some good things out of him this coming up season. And, uh, you know, a 6'6", you know, Elgin Newton Watkins, a Derek Curry out of Tallahassee Lincoln, uh, Antoine Bryant, out of Andrew Jackson, the Tyler Gilbert, uh, who's one of the top top sprinters in the state out of Pahokee. So, you know, and, and, and getting a, a Darius Adams and a Daquan Lindsey, a real, real good football player out of Linwood High School in California, who's sitting at about 5'11", 6'190". So we got some kids, they got some, they got a little girth to them, you know, and, and they got some physicality to them. Not only did you guys do a great job in getting out getting these players, you also went out and got a new wide receivers coach in Antonio Bellamy, a guy who cut his teeth here, had Edward Waters played here four years, started here four years, had a great career. You got a guy who's not only young, but you got a guy who's firing guys who really uh, command, he really commands respect of his players. Yeah, Coach Bellamy is doing a fine job with those guys as as he continues to learn his, the nuances of the scheme, the new offense that we're putting in, and as he he relates that over to the guys. But I, I, I'm pretty pleased with with the effort you know between the coaches and the staff, and I think. He'll do a fine job for this over uh, this uh, this club with those guys. You're the EWC wide receiver coach and former Tiger on the football program, Antonio Bellamy. Coach Bellamy, you've been a guy who's played here for four years. You're a four-year starter here, had a tremendous career. Now you've switched over to the coaching uh, ranks. Coming back here to EWC as a coach, you were a coach a couple of years ago under uh, former coach Brad Bernard's staff. You've seen the good, the bad, as both a player and a coach. When you see things really growing and really progressing and going in the right direction, what does that mean to you as an alum of Edward Waters, a former player, and now as a coach on the football team? Well, as a former player and an alum, it means a lot to me to see someone come in like uh, Coach Ruffin and to come in with uh, the passion that he comes in with and the leadership that he comes in with. He's done a great thing for this program, and he, he hasn't been here but for a couple of months. So um, when he first came in, uh, immediately he was a guy that I believed in. Uh, he's still a guy that I believe in. I've seen him uh, do some things already that has been phenomenal, you know, for the program. And uh, you coach with uh, an extra passion when you uh, have someone in leadership that you really, really, really believe in, uh, such as Greg Ruff. One of your quotes that you have for your wide receiver group is, I make big plays, we win big games. You've got a situation right now with the guys that you're going to recruit. You've got guys that can really make big plays that can help you win big games this year and into the future. 
Absolutely. Uh, one of the guys uh, that are real special to me, I call him a lot, making sure he's uh, squared away, he's good to go. He's very excited, but I think I'm probably more excited than him. And that's Tyler Gilbert uh, from Hokie. Uh, Tyler Gilbert, uh, if you watch his film, man, you can see that he's very athletic and he has a knack for the ball. He can find the ball wherever it's located. Uh, he can return the football. Uh, I think he plays both sides, but I, I'm definitely not going to let him play any defense. He's going to be <laughs> with me at receiver, but uh, he's a guy that can track the ball. And once he gets the ball in his hands, he can make a lot of things happen. He's very dangerous. He's very dangerous. And we need that guy that can go coast to coast. We can take a hitch, you know, uh, 67 yards, you know, and turn those small games into big games. Absolutely. That's Tyler Gilbert, the uh, guy from uh, Pahokee. Next up, we'll take a look at Elgin Nugent Watkins. Newton Watkins, excuse me, uh, 6'6", 206 from a book of CA High School down there uh, in South Florida. Big guy, big frame, a guy you can really use a lot of jump balls uh, with. Another guy that can really help you out in his offense. Right, and, and one thing I like about Elgin, he, he can play um, very physical. He can also play very physical uh, on the edge as well as in tight. He's a guy that we can line up uh, at a tight end. He's a guy that we can line up at slot, wide receiver. He's very versatile. That's, that, that's what I love about him. Uh, and of course, you mentioned the jump ball. When the ball is in the air, it's his ball. No questions asked. And uh, we need a guy like that that has sure hands. When the ball is in the air, nobody catches it but him. Next up, we'll take a look at Abdul Labor from uh, ASA Miami, a transferring six foot one ninety. Uh, Coach Ruff a few moments ago really raved about his ability on the football field. Abdul, um, Abdul is uh, probably the most complete uh, wide receiver that we have uh, with his routes, his dependability of the hands, um, and I I'll go back to his routes. The first route he ran on the uh, highlight film was a post corner, and we run the post corner. And he did it exactly how we would coach him to do it. And he's just, you know, uh, he, he was just in high school years ago. He's a transfer out of ASA. Uh, but he, he's a very talented guy. And the thing I really love about him is his confidence. When I talk to him, he has no fear in his voice. He's ready to play right now. He's a mature guy. I love that about him as well. He, he's a guy that you don't have to worry about on the field. He's a natural leader, and uh, you, you can see it on his skin. Next up, we'll take a look at this guy from right here in Jacksonville. Uh, played over at Baker County from right here uh, in Jacksonville. A guy who just recently played for a state championship at Wesley Gulford, 5'10", 170, out of Baker County High School. Well, uh, Wesley is, is one of those guys that we said we needed as far as the speed. Okay, uh, when you look at Wesley's film, and, and you see him do things with the ball, he's created so much separation. Once he gets that ball in his hand, he, he makes one move, he's a north and south guy. Uh, and also with his routes, his, his routes, he's really getting in and out of those breaks and creating separation uh, from the defensive back. Every ball he catches, well not every ball, but most of the ball he catches, he's open because he's running through routes. But he's that quick guy, he can really stretch the field as Coach mentioned earlier, he can blow the top off of some defenses and that is what we really needed. Here at I got a chance to look at this next guy, so I, mean, I was just really wild by, by his ability. Uh, Darius Adams, a 5'11", 135 from right here in Jacksonville. He looks 5'11 on film, but plays so much bigger. He plays like a 6'2", 6'3", receiver, very aggressive with the ball. Uh, can guys that can really fi find some open space, show off his speed, but it's very physical as well. Right, he is a very physical guy. Uh, one thing that I noticed, uh, he reminds me of a guy in, in, in the NFL. Uh, by the name of Sammy Watkins. And the reason why is once he gets the ball in his hands, his initial burst is so much faster than everybody else is on the field. He can get from point A to point B very point A to point uh, B very, very fast. And that's acceleration. He has great acceleration, uh, he has great explosion. And that and that's my favorite thing about him. He can also return the football. Next up, we'll take a look at a guy from over in California, Linwood High School, was actually the athlete of the year out there in California, Daquan Lindsay, 5'11", 190, another guy that has track speed and can really get it done for you as well. Absolutely. Uh, Daquan Lindsay, when I watched his film, it's, it's kind of hard to put uh, a certain position on him because he played several different positions, offensive side and defensive side of the ball. He played quarterback. He played a little running back. He played wide receiver. He played defensive back. Of course, I want to be greedy and have him at wide receiver, but he's a phenomenal athlete, hence him being the athlete of the year in California. Uh, there's some pretty good football played in California, so to be named athlete of the year, that's a big thing. Uh, Daquan Lindsey, um, he is uh, about six foot, uh, I, I would say 190 to 200 pounds, 
Uh, one thing that stuck out about him is, uh, believe it or not, the jump ball. When the ball is in the air, he's coming down with it. Now, may or may the guy be taller than him or not, he's coming down with the ball. Uh, he was another guy that can blow the top off the defenses. Um, I seen him uh, run the uh, the nine route a lot in, in his highlight film, and of course, everyone I seen him run, he came down with the ball. Uh, he makes phenomenal catches. Um, I know that uh, uh, kids play Madden a lot, and it's something called spectacular catching on Madden, and his spectacular catch would be a nine nine. Absolutely. Next time we'll take a look at his guy from right here in Jacksonville. Andrew Jackson High School, we'll take a look at Antoine Bryant, 5'10", 180 from Andrew Jackson. Antoine Bryant, uh, he's a special guy. Uh, I've seen a lot uh, from the running back position with him on the film, but I did see some at wide receiver. So uh, me and Coach uh, Ruffin discussed well, where he would be placed uh, on the field. So he, he's an athlete. He can do it all. He's an athlete. Uh, so I kind of stole him away from the running back's coach. Uh, but Antoine, he's another guy that has great acceleration, great explosion. Now, one thing that stuck out about him, and you'll see on the film, he does not go down off of the first defender, ever. So once he gets the ball in his hand, he can hurt defenses because the first guy that comes up and tries to contest him, he's not gonna go down. And, and we need a guy like that, uh, a guy that can make plays for us uh, from the running back position, from the ace back position, and also from the slot and wide out position. Last guy we'll take a look at, we'll wrap it up with a great program over there in Tallahassee. Tallahassee Lincoln High School, Derek Curry, 5'11", 180 from Tallahassee Lincoln. Now, I, I have a, a somewhat of a history with Lincoln High School. I played at Boston High School. Of course, we played Lincoln High School every year uh, out of state. Uh, but um, Lincoln High School, I know and I understand that they have a great program. Antonio Cromati came out of Lincoln High School. Uh, Fred Ross, you probably rem uh, remember him. He was the number one recruit in the nation in 2006, maybe. Uh, but they have a great program, so I, I really believe in what they're doing over there. Now, Derek Curry, uh, what stands out to him, uh, what stands out with him is, again, his, his route running and separation that he can uh, create uh, from the defensive backs. Uh, another guy that has very, very sure hands, um, and, and of course, um, the the highlight with him is when he catches that ball, that he's another guy that's very explosive. You know, all of these guys, they have some of the same attributes, and for a reason, because we want a guy that can make something happen with the football in his hands. And this offense, we can create, uh, Coach, Coach Smith and Coach Ruffin can uh, create um, certain plays that can get the guys the ball in open field. So we have to uh, recruit these these special guys who can do something with the ball after they catch it. When you add these guys to what you're bringing back with Kevion Johnson, Basil Spencer, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Kevion Jones, uh, Kenny Johnson, uh, Basil Spencer, Roy Allen, this could, as I spoke with uh, Coach Ruffin, uh, this could be a group that could not only be the best in the division. It could be the best in the conference and it could really be one of the best groups in the country. I have a group meeting with my guys and I communicate with them a lot. And uh, competition is the best coach. And uh, I, I love, I absolutely, I absolutely love the guys that are here now. But of course we have to recruit. Um, so we have recruited in such a way that uh, there's gonna be great competition. You know, nobody has a set position. We're coming into the season, of course, uh, us as coaches, we have some things on our mind, but those guys have to translate what we see on this film to the actual football field. And uh, I don't have any starters in my mind right now. They're gonna have to compete for every position, but I feel great uh, about the competition. I feel great uh, about the uh, uh, cohort that we have put together with these receivers. And uh, I am so excited, looking forward into the season. I know these guys, these group of special guys, are going to put up numbers. And I tell my guys all the time, it's eight slots on the bus. Everybody won't go. Everybody won't go. So you have to make sure that you win that number. And you can only do that by performing on the football. Yeah, absolutely. Coach, it should be a fun competition. Thanks for the time. Absolutely. Thank you. Coach, those are the wide receivers after bringing in another tremendous group of uh, student athletes that will be coming into the fold this fall. Next week, we'll take a look at the offensive line, but again, it's another testament of how your team just continues to get better as we get closer to training. Well, you know, one of the things, we're going to be a young football team. Uh, we understand that. Uh, we got transfers, you know, having Abdul coming here. He, he's probably the only transfer wide receiver we got right now. Uh, got a couple of more guys in the fall. So there's going to be some more guys in the next coming weeks as we go out to camp. We ain't going to start recruiting until we get to camp August the 1st. I mean, I think, you know, 
inherited a whole team football program. We, we, we know there's work to do, and as, as you continue to hear me say, you know, our, our trajectory is upwards, you know what I mean? So uh, we want to continue to recruit hard. Uh, the guys have done a phenomenal job. Coach Bellman's done a great job with his guys, and uh, we're just going to continue to make inroads to, to the Jacksonville, the 904 area, and, and we're, we're going to start hearing from inside out as we reach out to recruit guys, but we want to do it as, as with many 904 kids that we possibly can be in, uh, in the surrounding area of Jacksonville. You know, we want this to be a viable option in terms of recruiting for kids to be able to come over here and play football for us over here at Waters. Before we wrap up this week's show, we've got to make mention of the tremendous gift that the program received uh, on Monday from uh, Dr. Andy B. Henry, a 1964 graduate of Edward Waters College, uh, who's done great work in the education field, spent uh, 30 plus years as an educator at Bemidji State University, uh, graduate of Edward Waters, uh, has done great work uh, there, and has come back and has given Edward Waters a gift of $8,000 for the football program, just a tremendous gift uh, to help out you, your football program, and really help out uh, this institution as well. You know, as we move forward, as we, you know, the stadium's going up, uh, we're trying to uh, remodel, you know, certain areas of the, of the whole wing of the school that we got and sits in the end zone. Uh, you know, as we sit sit here and do that, you know, it, it's, it's going to uh, take money. You know, it takes funds to get where we need to go. And man, just sitting there talking with her, she's an awesome lady. And her sister, uh, Mrs. Gertrude Henry, she's a 1962 graduate of Edward Waters College, and and both of them had phenomenal careers in terms of. You know, Miss Miss Great Trude uh, spent 27 to 30 years over in the Virgin Islands as an educator for the Department of Ed. Uh, Dr. Anna B. Here and spent 15 years in the Virgin Islands, 30 years at Bemidji State, and she's always represented her hometown in the utmost respectable fashion. And you know, even to the point she's a professor at emeritus uh, and has an endowed scholarship in her name at Bemidji State. And I mean, to come in and be able to sit down and her share her story. She's an author of two books. You know, I was just totally, totally blown away by her and her commitment to what we're, we're trying to do over here and her return and coming back to Jacksonville and say, hey, I want to do my part. And, and, I, and my, my, my thing is, as we continue to make this program where we want to be, I can, I can say this, that we're getting out the treadmill over here. You know, we're going to start running real fast and, and running quickly. You know, we're, you know, I think, you know, a lot of time we're on the treadmill, you're trying to get nowhere in a hurry. But uh, that's not the case now. And I think that the fan base, has a reason to be excited about what's going on, the former players, especially those of, you know, from the old one football team and beyond, uh, 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 you know, the bridge builders of this program. We encourage everybody to come back. We need you. We need you to give. There's a lot of things that need to be done. They can be done in a short period of time. It takes us. Nice. It's not. A, it's not a me thing. It's a we thing. And I promise you, uh, we got some good things going over here. And we look. We look forward to being able to uh, bring this fractured fan fan base back together. So we can we can have a championship program in the, in the in the near future. Absolutely, we definitely look forward to it. Next week we'll take a look at the offensive line. We'll talk to the offensive line coach Glenn Chapman. That should be a fun episode. So on behalf of all of us here at Inside the Huddle, we wish you and yours the very best this Fourth of July weekend, and we definitely hope looking forward to seeing you back here next week for another episode of Inside the Huddle.